Swan Zoo. This video was is from last week. It was recorded at the China International Beauty Expo. One attendee at this expo tested positive. One person. So Chinese officials did what they do best. They raised an alarm, shut down everything, and forced everyone to take a Wuhan virus test. That's why these people were running in panic. Textbook case of what not to do. But this is becoming the norm in China. Day after day, city after city, hundreds, if not thousands of people are lining up for tests. The Chinese establishment is overwhelmed by the crowds. They're struggling with Omicron. More than 50 million people are under lockdown. 50 million people in China locked down. The scale of this outbreak is massive. At least 13 cities have shut down. China suddenly feels the need for new hospitals. Look at this. In Jilin, Beijing is trying to build a makeshift hospital with 6,000 beds. In Shanghai, even food delivery is proving to be a challenge. Barriers have been erected outside residential compounds. 17 million people are under lockdown in this city alone. China is already counting its losses. The lockdown will hurt half of the country's GDP. Exporters are worried about supply chains. Trucks are delayed because the drivers have to take tests. Container rates have spiked, tripled compared to last year. Ships are facing delays at ports, delays of up to 12 hours. That's because China is locking down again. It's 2020 all over again in China. How bad is this outbreak? The worst ever. Worse than what we saw in Wuhan in 2020. This is China's worst Wuhan virus outbreak. On average, the country is reporting more than 2,000 infections every day. But as always, the numbers do not add up. As of Tuesday, 28 out of 31 provinces in China had confirmed cases. The virus has spread to almost all parts of the country, which means the number of cases is bound to be more than what the official data claims. What's worse, Beijing's old pandemic playbook is multiplying the misery. I'm talking about the zero COVID strategy. China has not changed its methods since 2020. So even if there's one suspected case, everyone in the city is tested. China held it up as an example for the world. And it's still an example, but now it's an example of what not to do. Zero COVID has had zero success. Let me show you. This is the same convention center, center in Guangzhou that we just showed you, the one where just one attendee tested positive, just one. I want you to look at the chaos it led to. caged inside a convention center waiting for a negative Wuhan virus test. Is this the best way to handle an outbreak? We all know the answer. As it turned out, all of these people tested negative after so much chaos, panic and pain. The thing is, zero COVID is unscientific and it's causing major suffering. Ask Hong Kong. It has reported the world's highest death rate in this surge and that's not even the most shocking part of it. What I'm about to show you is disturbing. These pictures went viral last week. This is a hospital in Hong Kong. These bags are not empty. There are human bodies inside, dead. Wuhan virus victims. And they were kept right next to Wuhan virus patients. Patients who were on oxygen support and ventilators. And next to them you have body bags. What explains this horror? Too many deaths. Crematoriums in Hong Kong are nearly full. Even the administration cannot deny this. Let me tell you what Hong Kong's chief executive, Carrie Lam, said. Our crematoriums are working day and night, and they're already close to their capacity. Carrie Lam says she still needs more time to fix the situation. Time has come for the government to have a midterm review of all those measures announced in the form of 22nd of um, February, ranging from border controls, such as flood bans, to um, you know, quarantine period for arrivals, to uh, whether we are going to do this compulsory universal test, and uh, the uh, resumption of face-to-face uh, -face learning in schools, and social distancing measures. So uh, uh, just give me a little bit of time uh, when the one month period comes, that is around the 20th or 21st of March, wow. we will do a comprehensive uh, so, on the situation. 50 million people on lockdown, 17 million got COVID. 
carry Lam's resignation, but Lam, just like her political masters in Beijing, refuses to accept her failures. China depends on two tools to fight the virus. Number one is mass testing and lockdowns. The second is vaccines, Chinese vaccines. The first one is not practical, mass testing and lockdowns. The second one does not work, Chinese vaccines. Now, China may not admit to this, but it has failed to contain its homegrown virus, and now it is struggling to treat its patients. This week, China gave emergency use authorization to Pfizer's antiviral pill. It is called Paxlov. It is one of the few available drugs to treat the Wuhan virus. Wasn't China working on its own antiviral pills? It's like the Chinese vaccine story. The pills don't work, so China has been forced to swallow its pride and accept foreign pills instead. Vion is now available. In